again, everyone. I think every one of us has dark moments in our lives, right? They may be literally dark moments or metaphorically dark times in our lives. Even the most faithful Christians are going to go through those times. And sometimes they're self-inflicted, right? Sometimes those are times when we know what we need to do to fix it. We know how to change the situation, and so we just need to take action. But sometimes it's out of our hands, isn't it? Sometimes the dark times in our lives are the result of the actions of other people or other circumstances that impact us that we have no control over. That can be really discouraging, can't it? It can be confusing. Uh, it can be very difficult to know what to do next. And that's where we find a couple first century Christians in our study tonight as they are thrust into very uncomfortable and unfamiliar surroundings. And I want you to get a Bible and I want you to turn to Acts chapter 16. It's in this chapter that we find the Apostle Paul. He's in the city of Philippi. He is spreading the gospel, but things do not go as he anticipated. And we're going to start reading with verse 16 of Acts chapter 16. Read along with me. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in, attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So Paul and, and Silas are beaten with rods, a severe beating. We're told many blows to their bodies. And then we're told they're tossed into prison. Now, there are some things that you should know about prisons at this time in history and, and in the, the Roman Empire, uh, especially the types of prisons that someone would be put in while they were awaiting either a trial or some sort of decision to be made about their circumstances. There were essentially three kinds of prisons. First would be the house arrest type. And this is kind of what we see at the end of the book of Acts. As Paul is allowed to move about freely, he is perfectly fine and he's able to communicate with people in the outside world and, and do a lot of the normal things that he would do. Uh, this is a, a fairly low security type situation, not a, an especially uncomfortable place to be. That's the first type of prison. The second type of imprisonment was usually a, a military imprisonment, one that uh, was a little more restrictive because the, the prisoner would be attached to a soldier using shackles of some sort in order to keep them from, from going anywhere that they might try to go. Usually it was for a shorter period of time and, and uh, just for those prisoners who might try to escape or something like that. 
But then there was the third type of imprisonment. This was prison in general. Typical prisons in the first century did not have cells where individuals stayed or even two or three stayed. Instead, everyone was thrown in together. And by everyone, I mean large numbers of people were thrown into small spaces together. One author makes reference to a prison that had over 200 men and almost 50 women all crammed together into one little space. Imagine what that would be like. These places were a, a breeding ground for disease and the prisoners would die. And as if that wasn't bad enough, some of them had a, a deeper, darker inner portion of the prison. No windows, no light, just darkness. That's where we find Paul and Silas here in Acts chapter 16 in Philippi. They are in the inner chamber of this prison. It's dark, it's damp, they're surrounded by other prisoners. I can't imagine that it smelled very good. And Paul and Silas are hurting, possibly bleeding from all the blows that they have taken. They're sore. What do you think you would do in that situation? What do you think you would do if you found yourself locked away, not knowing how long you might be there, in the dark, crammed in with other people, surrounded by other criminals, what would you do? You can keep reading in your Bible beyond this point if you want to find out exactly what Paul and Silas did on that night. But I also would suggest that you come and join us on Sunday night at 5 o'clock. We're going to continue to discuss the significance of what happens next in Paul and Silas's story. I look forward to seeing you there.